वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्क इन गेट टू थाउजेंड एंड थर्टीन एग्जाम इट्स अ टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पाइप लाइनिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स रीड द स्टेटमेंट कंसिडर एन इंस्ट्रक्शन पाइप लाइन विद फाइव स्टेजेस विदाउट एनी ब्रांच प्रोडिक्शन फैच इंस्ट्रक्शन डिकोड इंस्ट्रक्शन फैच ऑपरेंड एग्जीक्यूट इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड राइट ऑपरेंड The stage delays for F I D I F O E I and W O R five, seven, ten, eight, and six nanoseconds respectively. There are intermediate storage buffers after each stage, and the delay of each buffer is one nanosecond. A program consisting of twelve instructions I one to I twelve is executed in this pipelined processor. Instruction I four. is the only branch instruction and its branch target is i9 if the branch is taken during the execution of this program the time in nanoseconds needed to complete this program is okay so they are saying that if this program is executed on this processor how much time is it going to take if i4 is a branch instruction and it it branches to i9 okay that means if the branch is taken during the program effectively how many instructions do we have 1 2 3 4 after i4 will jump to i9 that means all these instructions are skipped okay so effectively we have these four instructions and these four instructions which obviously means our program is kind of having eight instructions because they are saying that the branch is taken during the execution so you just neglect these instructions okay now if a program with eight instructions is executed how many clock cycles will it require on a five stage pipeline first of all let's see that first instruction is going to take all five stages because initially the pipeline is empty after that we are left with seven instructions only because total were eight first instruction is executed and the pipeline has filled now every instruction will take one clock cycle each that means remaining seven instructions will take seven clock cycles each so in total 12 clock cycles are required by a program with eight instructions but the thing is this one is not a normal program it has a branch so there will be some uh empty cycles where we are not doing any work so in those cycles the cpu will be stalling okay now let's find out how many stall cycles will be there and we'll add that number into 12 to get the effective number of clock cycles required by such program what is 12 12 is the number of cycles required if we had eight instructions but no jump now we'll also con consider this jump okay let's see how much is the penalty caused by one jump so this is the five stage pipeline let's just write the names of these stages now after this instruction i4 certainly some other instruction will be fetched here okay rather i5 will be fetched here but soon the processor will realize that this one is a branch instruction and this instruction that was fetched will be flushed out okay the pipeline will be cleared now the new instruction i9 will be fetched 
द थिंग इज वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट आफ्टर विच स्टेज आफ्टर वट पार्ट ऑफ दिस पाइप लाइन और दिस इंस्ट्रक्शन विल द न्यू इंस्ट्रक्शन बी फैच्ड ओके लेट्स ट्राई टू एनालाइज दैट से इंस्ट्रक्शन नंबर फोर इज सम ब्रांच इंस्ट्रक्शन से इट इज जे एन जेड टू सम एड्रेस ए ओके सो जम्प एफ नॉट जीरो टू एड्रेस ए वाइल दिस इंस्ट्रक्शन इज फैच वाइल आई फोर इज फैच दैट मीन्स एफ आई विल यू नो द टारगेट एड्रेस सर्टनली नो वाइल इट इज डिकोडेड विल यू नो द टारगेट एड्रेस नो बिकॉज वाइल डिकोडिंग इट यूल जस्ट गेट टू नो दैट दिस इज अ जम्प एफ नॉट जीरो काइंड ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन वाइल फैचिंग द ऑपरेंट दैट मीन्स वाइल फैचिंग दिस ए विल यू नो द टारगेट एड्रेस नो बिकॉज Currently, you don't know that will this will the processor jump to this address or not? Because currently you haven't evaluated the condition. Only after evaluating the condition, you will know the target address. Because it's quite possible that this jump is not taken. Okay, if this jump is not taken, the next instruction will be I five. Okay, so that means even in fetch operand phase, you don't know the target address. Now the next phase is EI execute instruction. Will you know the target address in this phase? Yeah, because rather after this phase, in this phase, you will evaluate this condition. If this condition comes out to be true, you will load this address A into the program counter in execute phase. Okay, then after execute phase only. because now you have evaluated the condition as well as you know this address that means this address is obviously fetched from memory rather fetching has been done even prior to evaluating the condition so after this phase ei you will fetch the new instruction okay normally the fetch would have happened here okay but now you have introduced these three stall cycles and because it's given in the question that uh, the branch is taken so after i4 we execute i9 and similarly its remaining four stages will be executed okay then you can just resume the program normally i10 i11 and i12 okay now what we need to calculate is how many stall cycles did we introduce okay these three stall cycles that means normal program takes 12 clock cycle program with one jump will take three more cycles because we didn't consider these three stalls here so this program actually takes 12 plus 3 clock cycles which comes out to be 15 clock cycles okay till now we have calculated that this program is going to take 15 clock cycles now if we know that how much time one clock cycle takes we can simply multiply it by 15 and calculate the total time required by this program okay so just try to calculate the time period of clock now i have discussed it lo a lot of times that we'll just consider the maximum out of these the maximum stage delay the reason is already discussed in most of the pyq videos as well as my theory lectures you, you please uh, refer to one of those so the time period of clock or rather the effective stage delay for each of stage we will consider it to be 10 nanoseconds plus 1 nanosecond taken by the buffers and also even though we have a lot of buffers rather we have five buffers placed after every stage or before every stage that depends maybe it's mentioned in the question i don't remember but that doesn't actually matter but still we'll consider this delay only once so 10 nanosecond plus 1 nanosecond which comes out to be 11 nanoseconds as the time period of clock so one clock requires 11 nanoseconds 
after every 11 nanoseconds we generate a clock signal and such 15 clocks are required what is the total time taken 11 nanoseconds into 15 this is your answer so this comes out to be 15 into 10 is 150 plus 15 is 165 this is your final answer 165 nanoseconds let me see if it's present in the options yeah option b is your answer 165 n s now some of you might also take the other way around which is they might calculate the effective cpi this is the effective cpi in branch instructions because between completing two instructions there are four clocks okay they might add four here but keep in mind this 12 you have calculated 12 by considering cpi to be one that means you are already considering that each instruction takes one clock okay so you don't add four here just add this much part add this much part because instruction i9 is only taking these three clock cycles extra okay one have all this one clock cycle we have already considered it while uh, calculating 12 because we assumed each of the instruction is taking one clock but I'll suggest you you just go by this method of stall cycles that how many cycles have we introduced how many stall cycles have we introduced to just take care of this jump okay this one is the best method uh, you just don't need to worry about anything now there is one very naive way of solving such questions also that is drawing this entire diagram okay um, maybe I will draw that and just show you the solution that way also okay so what has happened is i've executed the first four instructions i1 to i4 you can see that it's the normal execution there are no dependencies nothing we are executing the each of the five stages one by one for every instruction now the first instruction in first clock cycle is using the fetch hardware okay so second instruction cannot fetch here because already the hardware used in fetching is used by instruction i1 so i2 will be using the fetch hardware in the second clock cycle okay similarly you can see the execution till i4 now i have already discussed how to draw such diagrams in great detail so i am not discussing it here the point that need more emphasis here is these three clock cycles will be stalled because until this point until this point after uh, that means after uh, until the execution phase is completed you don't know what is the next instruction so you will be not fetching the next instruction in any of these three clock cycles that means the fetch of next instruction will be performed here similarly now we don't have now because we have performed this jump the next three instructions can be executed normally that means they will be fetched like this
let me actually just complete that table. So after this jump is performed, we'll just continue with normal execution of these four instructions. No dependencies, no jumps, no branches, nothing. That means in total we require one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen clock cycles. Okay. So you can just multiply 15 with 10 plus 1, which is 12 to get your answer, which I think is 165. Yeah, but I don't recommend you going by this method because it's very lengthy and you are doing the same thing. You just need to take care of these three stall cycles. So why not use the previous method? Okay.